Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the hidden cost of programming languages and having things too easy. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the hidden cost of programming languages becoming so simple that the work of a programmer becomes more like copy paste or more like a construction worker or a plumber or something who just puts things together, an assembly line worker. Well, and um, yeah, that's probably it right there. And the short answer is we're not really there, I would say, in terms of languages at this point, but there are other tools that are creating the situation. And the cost is only felt by the people who have a misalignment between the thing that they want to build and the th tool and what the tool they have picked is made to do. Let me explain. This sounds like an in a complicated answer, but let's just unpack it because I think it's going to be fairly straightforward when, when I try when I explain it. So first thing that I need to say is that if we talk about simplicity or creating a programming language that is simple, I think that we should just touch on the fact that that is a subjective thing. If you ask a diehard C programmer, is it too easy or have we created too many languages that abstract away a lot of the very important intricate details of how the computer works? then quite a few of them would probably say yes, because there are a lot of complexities surrounding programming that you kind of get away from if you use a higher level language such as Java or C Sharp or Python or Ruby or JavaScript, etc, etc. And all of these higher level languages have certain limitations that that they abstract away, or at the very least there are trade offs so that you can have a more productive workflow or other, other things that just makes it a better choice for certain types of application development than if let's say you were making an operating system or something like that. So that's one part of it. We have to agree that there is absolutely there is today languages that are simpler and they, ha they are moving towards being simpler and APIs that within the languages are making and made simpler so you don't have to know as much about the underlying stuff. But we are not at the point today, I will argue, where a programming language has become so simple to use that you can practically copy paste and just lift in things and then have a working application. Well, there are frameworks that are developed that allow you to do this, and but that's a different thing. There is no programming language. Like you cannot today, even in our in everybody's most hated and beloved language, JavaScript, go in and copy paste your way to success. You will definitely be able to copy paste some code, but it's it's some it's depending on the project that you are working on. You're not going to be able to find finished modules or finished libraries that do absolutely everything. Some stuff, yes, absolutely, but some stuff you're going to have to build for, build by yourself. And that is, uh, that is true for all of these languages. Now, if we go higher and we go and talk about frameworks and tooling, well, then the story is the same. You have tools today that are so well developed that they practically build most of the site for you. An example would be these the low code solutions where you can use CLIs or different types of tooling that practically do most of the work for you. But at the very end of it, you still have this one little part that you can't get away from. And that is the business logic. Now the business logic is the thing that you cannot abstract away at least not today. The only thing that you can truly do is that you can abstract away a very common business need. What I mean by that is practically basically that no one will be able to create a one one solution a single solution that works for everybody 
for every single thing that they want to build. That's not possible. What you can do is that you can figure out the common denominators between the different projects. An example of that would be, oh, I have an incoming net request or a web request. I have an HTTP call or something like that that needs to be routed somewhere. That brings us to the router. Well, a routing system or a routing framework is a common denominator for every single web application practically. And that means that, yeah, you can create a library or something like that that makes it much easier. So you don't have to parse that in incoming H um, T connection. You don't have to know how to convert a TCP connection into an HTTP call or like how to parse all the information. All that stuff you can abstract away because it's a standard and it's the same for absolutely everybody, practically. So that's sure, you can abstract away that, but you can't abstract away the, the fact that when the call goes to a specific URL in your application, you're supposed to return hello world, and in my application, you're supposed to add two numbers together and return the result. That's not something that you can abstract away, and there's no way for you to copy paste in that code unless somebody has literally built the exact same application that you have built. Now the cost, on the other hand, that this person is asking about, I will say, is it's the analogy that developers are getting to a point where tooling are, is so developed that they are basically just putting things together. Well, yeah, sure, that is true to a point, but as with any profession, unless you are literally working in, a, in an assembly line, there's always a complication. There's always circumstances that makes it a situation where you do have to have some thought on the matter. You have to have some skills because other, otherwise, anybody could do it and the fact of the matter is that very few people know how to program and very few people have the ability to put together code and write code so you can absolutely make the argument that there is a, there is a hidden cost and the uh, hidden cost that you don't see is when you try to pick a tool or a framework or a library or something like that that makes your life easier right here and now but you don't predict how that's going to play out for you further down the road. Now, an example would be, let's say that you have a WordPress site. Now, WordPress is a great example of this phenomenon that this person is talking about. So WordPress abstracts away practically everything that you need to know about how to build a web application. Practically, it's all to the point where it's basically just plug and play, depending of course of what you want to do. And then you have customizations that you can make to this platform and you can extend it to your heart's desire in many cases. This is a very good thing. However, let's say that you are using a WordPress site and then you realize that, wow, later on this uh, is not gonna fit my use case anymore because my business has grown and now I'm working with a large company. They want to do custom integrations or something really tricky, something much more convoluted. There is no finished product or application or widget or something like that in the marketplace. Well, then you're going to have to build it from scratch. And that's the problem with program. It is by nature a very it's a it's a flexible profession. It has to be flexible. You can abstract away the things that always stay the same, but the second you have a business requirement that goes outside of what is standard, unless you can figure out some custom solution there, your tool is not going to help you. And that is fundamentally how that's how innovation works. You're it's not it's never going to be an assembly line type of thing. Some problems will absolutely get to a point where you can just kind of plug and play them, but fundamentally the, the process of software development is always going to keep on changing and always have a certain, level, a certain level of customization. And as long as that customization isn't there, you need people with specialized training to do it. And this is true for the plumbers and the construction workers as well. They still have to have skills that an average person may not have in order to make all these parts fit together. Because if they didn't, then nobody would, there would be no requirements on experience to do any of these jobs, and there is. So what I want you to take away from this is that the impact of having languages and tools and so forth becoming simpler in programming, I think is 
it's a good thing in general, but I don't think that we're getting to a point where you can just plug and play and that people just can kind of make anything work. Because at the end of the day, the people who pick tools that abstract away most of the work for them are either doing one of two things. They're either actually saving themselves a lot of time because they don't need to create a custom solution or they're shooting themselves in the foot. And that all depends on if they understand what they need to do here today and what the future is going to hold for that product. If the future requires them to change the product in a way which isn't really well supported by the thing that they're doing today or the tools that they are using today, they will always be forced to make the same choice. And that is to hack it together if they even can do that. But most of the time, let's say that they actually they can't, well, then they're going to have to rewrite the system or build something new. And that requires customizations, which requires people with in-depth knowledge about programming. Every single company who has any type of digital product always has to make the choice. Either we have to go and find a off-the-shelf product where, where nobody needs to know anything about coding that perfectly fits our use case, or we're going to have to find someone who knows how to customize something or build something from scratch that fits our purposes. And that process isn't going away. And if it were to go away, the entire profession of programming would be pointless. Have a great day.